Morning, guys. Welcome to Coffee Chat. Mm. Wow, it is a beautiful morning this morning. A little bit windy and cold, though, let me tell you. It's kind of crazy because the other day when it was all cloudy and didn't look like it was warm at all, it was actually quite nice. Come out here today thinking it's going to be nice and warm because the sun is out and what, what? <laughs> and what do you get? This big cold breeze coming in. Kind of crazy, but hey, <laughs> that's, I guess, how it is. You know, like Forrest Gump said, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> Mm. Oh my goodness. Having said that, guys, I was reading two articles today. And the first one is coming out of the UK. Now, this one was really kind of interesting because it deals with the debt market. And I'm telling you, the beating heart of our economy right now and probably forever, the way things are going, is the debt market. Literally. And so, needless to say, Back a, while, a couple months back, we saw that the Bank of England came out there and they dumped a ton of liquidity into the debt market and bought up all kinds of bonds and gilt, the gilt market over there and all that kind of stuff. And they did that because if they hadn't, what would have transpired within just a few hours is a cataclysmic collapse. So needless to say, in the article today, they were addressing that very deal. And in the article, they were saying, hey, we need some global action here because if we hadn't have gone in there at that time and done that, then a massive amount of UK pension funds would have absolutely collapsed them within hours. And so here you saw them turn on the quantitative easing, the Bank of England, to go in there and rescue this debt market. So what was going on, of course, is you're seeing a big liquidity move. And they went in and they bought that up. And what does that do, guys? It pushed risk on assets or cash back into risk on assets to save the marketplace at the time. And look, you even saw the European Central Bank say the same thing. They're telling us they're doing all this quantitative tightening and raising interest rates, bing, bing, bing. But all of these central banks are going in there and bailing out the system and buying up debt like it's no tomorrow. Don't kid yourself. This is what's really going on. And obviously that is going to affect more inflation down the road because the central banks, guys, they get their money just by printing it up. And if you were to take away the power of any of these central banks, Federal Reserve, all of them, you were to take away their power to issue just $1, the whole house of cards would absolutely collapse because that's what they do. They issue debt. Now, interesting, I love the way Augustine Carson, who is the president of the Bank of International Settlements, Central Bank of all central banks, I love his definition of fiat currency. When he's talking about paper money notes, do you know what he calls them? He calls them liability instruments. He doesn't call them cash. He doesn't call them legal tender. He calls them liability instruments, and that is exactly what they are. They're just promissory notes to the Federal Reserve, believe it or not. And of course, this has affected our economy in such a big, big way because way back when, when we went through that whole sea dump thing and they turned on the money machine and it was just printing like it was going out of style, they knew their economists are not stupid. These guys are paid big, big bucks to do forecasting and you name it. And that's what they do. And you can't tell me that they did not know when they did that, that we'd be dealing with this. Sure they did. They did it with precision, um, you know, planning. And this is not um, a shock to these guys. They knew exactly what they were doing. And their objective now is, let's just inflate our way out of it. Of course, that is a, a form of, you know, uh, taxation because what they're doing there is they're reaching right into your pocket and pulling money out by destroying the purchasing power of your dollars. Don't, <laughs> no kidding. Mm. Now, the second article that I was reading was quite interesting as well. Now, this one was on Binance. Now, apparently in 24 hours, Binance has had $3 billion withdrawn from its platform. Now, most of this, of course, is coming from all kinds of fear, uncertainty, and doubt in Binance that has been thrown out there into the marketplace that somehow they're going to be going through, get charged with money laundering and this and this and all this kind of stuff. And I'm telling you guys, it just smells like a rat to me. Now, having said that, I have no issues with people taking their 
uh, crypto off exchanges because, hey, not your keys, not your crypto. I always say, use an exchange for what an exchange is for, buying and selling. It's not supposed to be a place where you store your assets like a bank. Now, if you're in like, you know, quick trades or, you know, that kind of stuff, if you're leveraged short or long or whatever, then yeah, I get it. You're going to have some assets on there. But if you're just a regular folks who are out there just buying and hodling along, then hey, don't keep your crypto on any exchange. Now that's just my suggestion. And I always like to have my crypto on my cold storage wallets and have it into my custody so I know how to deal with that. So that's how I deal with that. So anyways, guys, it is very interesting to see how this whole marketplace is unfolding and just look what's going on with this whole FTX deal. <laughs> mm. Seems like a never ending saga. Now you got Kevin O'Leary coming out there and he's kind of coming to the defense of SBF saying, well, you know, it's all Binance. CZ Binance had a in on him and he was going to pull the pins and on and on and on and on and on. The reality is a massive fraud took place. I mean, you don't misplace eight billion dollars of customer funds i mean you ask any lawyer about whether they dip into their trust account and utilize those funds for their personal investments and endeavors and all that and i'll tell you what <laughs> if they're any worth any of their salt they're not going to do it why because they are they're number one it's criminal and they could face criminal prosecution number two they could get disbarred and lose their license to practice law and number three they'll get sued to the high heavens by all their clients <laughs> Mm. So SBF and crew, by the way, knew what was going on. It was a total fraud from the get-go. Now, what I really am interested in with respect to this whole scenario is where's Carolina and all this stuff? You know, I think she rolled over on, on Sam. I think she went out there and she made some kind of a plea deal because here she was, the CEO of Alameda Research, where a lot of this money got filtered through. So what's going on here? I think we're going to find out lots as this whole thing unfolds. And it's not over yet. Believe it. This is one of the best shows you're going to get this, uh, you know, over Christmas and into the new year, as, as far as I, I can see. Get your popcorn ready because I think it's going to be explosive, the stuff that comes out of this. So anyway, that's how I'm feeling. Well, guys, I hope you have an amazing Thursday. It looks like it's going to be a good one. And I've got a great video planned for us later on today. And until then, guys, take care.